What is up, XRP community? Welcome back to another video. Thank you for joining me. Hope you're having a blessed Sunday. A lot to cover, and the big news is Ripple has partnered with the Global 500, uh, Global Fortune 500, biggest broker dealer, um, a massive partnership. But first off, guys, Jay Clayton, the guy that started this lawsuit on his last day as commissioner of the SEC, he should not have voted because his law firm represented Consensus and brokered the purchase of Quorum between Consensus and JP Morgan. JP Morgan, which was pushing JPM coin, a direct competitor to Ripple and XRP. As you can see here in this document, they list examples of crypto assets designed for interbank or intrabank payments. XRP and JPM coin and what a great power play by JP Morgan and this is just speculation but XRP has been developed for 12 years by Ripple JPM coin it's more new they don't have the repertoire the experience nor do they need it because JP Morgan does so much business outside of the blockchain space Ripple solely focused on designing an intrabank settlement token like XRP now, if there's regulatory enforcement and SEC is coming after XRP, but not JPM coin, it's a great strategy. A great clip here from, um, what is this guy's name? He's a super successful, almost a billionaire, really high energy guy. Just take a listen. If you have Bitcoin, sell half, keep half. This is the top. Nobody listen to me. If you knew who was really behind Bitcoin, really behind Bitcoin. You would run as fast as you fucking could to sell it. I know. 100%. If you knew who owned Bitcoin or who started Bitcoin, you and you had Bitcoin, you couldn't sleep at night. I know. 100%. And when the real founder of Bitcoin comes out, it is my humble opinion, and there's nothing humble about me, Bitcoin will go to fucking zero. So he's just, I'm speculating, I don't know who the founder of Bitcoin is, he claims to know. And I always say the faster Bitcoin dies, the faster real crypto can thrive. Fun fact, you know the founder of Bitcoin, the author of the white paper, Satoshi Nakamoto? Satoshi Nakamoto is a Japanese name, okay? Look up the meaning in the language of Japanese for Satoshi. Look up the meaning for Nakamoto, and it translates directly, more or less, to central intelligence. Just an interesting fact. Comment below if you guys didn't know that. If you guys need a spot for digital assets, XRP, or Flare, I recommend Uphold. It's sleek, it's simple, it's secure, and it's where I dollar cost average and buy my XRP and Flare every single day. And if you guys want $41 guaranteed for free, sign up with Webull, deposit one penny, and you can get up to 3K in free stocks. Typically, you just get 40 to 300 bucks, but it's a great offer just for signing up, depositing one penny. You're guaranteed $41 in minimum stock value. It is a limited time offer. A link to Webull and Uphold in the video description below. And moving forward, guys, when is this next bull market going to begin? The Altcoin Oracle has a nice graph here from Cross Border Capital saying the Bitcoin cycle and liquidity cycle correlate. Be ready for 2024. And it shows right here, the Bitcoin market cycle overlaid by the global liquidity cycle. And currently, as you can see, we're on that downhill, but it looks like we could see the bottom sometime in 2023 and 2024 through 2025 will be that next leg up. And if you guys do use Twitter, I also have my Twitter in the video description below. And here's a great clip from Mr. Man XRP, this is Chris Larson, the guy in the Ripple lawsuit, one of the founders of XRP, talking about the internet of value and how the internet of blockchain are gonna be way different. So, uh, great question. So, uh, you know, again, the internet of value is gonna be so different from the first internet because you're gonna have three uh, really different domains have to work, work together, right? Tech, capital, and compliance. And compliance just has a, an outsized, uh, you know, influence when it comes to money. For obvious reasons, it's not going to change. It's just the reality. We sort of need to sort of stop fighting that and just say that's just the way it is. But I think there's a lot of good news there. Throughout the world, fintech generally and blockchain specifically has become, you know, kind of very, very popular in, in the you know, with policymakers. So we have a stream of policymakers coming from all over the world coming through our offices. Uh, so that's a very good dynamic that's very different from two years ago. Uh, two years ago with the Mt. Gox collapse. 
uh, and some of the nonsense being spewed out by sort of these you know, libertarian Bitcoin fanatics, which was just not helpful at all. Uh, and thankfully, they've really come, uh, Bitcoin community has done a great job of really adjusting. They've got lobbyists all over the world. They're well-funded, much better. Um, but you, know, you, you have to take it seriously. You've got to get good compliance people involved in your startups really early. I know it's a pain, it's expensive, but you just got to do it. Um, I'd say get some connections to policymakers. Don't spend too much time in Washington. It can be a real sinkhole. So you can get in that trap as well where you're you know, having a lot of meetings and meanwhile your competitors are getting ahead of you because you're spending too much time in Washington. Uh, so you need to have regulators at your startup and that's why we're so bullish on Ripple. The Ripple board lands JP Morgan veteran and regulatory expert Sandy O'Connor. She had a three year career, three decade career at JP Morgan. She joined in 1988 and she led engagement with G20 regulators and policymakers for the bank, JP Morgan. She retired from the institution in April 2019. And now, where is she on the board? Ripple. So, talking about having important regulatory players and people that can interact with these policymakers, Ripple sure does have them. And Ashley Prosper tweet out, tweeted out, don't be fooled. Gary Gensler knows that Ripple has value. And it's a screenshot from an MIT lecture back in 2018. And the slide says FinTech, payments, and some startup unicorns. And the only blockchain company I can see right here is Ripple, right next to Plaid. Plaid is a software that links banks to allow you to use your bank on these third-party apps like Venmo and Cash App. But the only blockchain company here labeled as a startup unicorn Ripple. Gary knows the true value. We just don't know who's paying him. Now, the largest broker dealer for the global 500, Fortune 500, Ripple and Taz will be working together to overcome issues in the existing payment systems while leveraging Ripple's blockchain technology and solutions. On the other hand, software solution provider TAS works with several commercial and central banks across Europe and other parts of the world. Moreover, TAS is also the main broker dealer of the global Fortune 500. Apart from being the biggest payment carrier in Europe, they also have a global presence across seven countries. They serve 150 clients worldwide and also manage over 100 million cards globally. Okay, look at some of the customers that Taz works with Deutsche Bank, Morgan Stanley, Banco Posta, Citibank, a lot of big banks here representing multiple continents. With Taz Network Gateway, it is easy and immediate access to the Ripple world. Find out about all of the benefits of the most innovative fund settlement protocol and the right technology to implement them. Ripple plus Taz. They could have partnered with a lot of blockchain companies. They chose Ripple for a reason. The Taz Network Gateway, an isolated system that allows for upgrades, replacements to comply with new regulations and standards like Ripple plus connected to Target 2, the largest payments carrier in Europe, and they support ISO 222, and they have millions of transactions per hour, okay? In this document, they cite Ripple as an example of these new emerging standards and payments. And the TAS Network Gateway documentation highlights the Ripple blockchain protocol as part of the architecture that connects this old financial world to the new financial world, okay? This document, TAS Network Gateway 3.0, the solution to access interbank networks and manage financial data exchanges. They mention different formats and protocols, okay? Of course, we have SwiftNet, and then they have blockchain protocols. And the only example when they put blockchain protocols is Ripple. And there are a lot of blockchain protocols that can do exactly what they are describing here. But there's only a very few, a very select amount that have been working for as long as Ripple and have the same amount of connections with the regulators and banks already like Ripple does. And here in the Ripple, in the TAS network gateway architecture, they're showing you how Ripple fits into this product that they're using for all these banks, right? This TAS network, they do hundreds of millions of transactions a day, and they work with over 150 banks worldwide, so not just any random partnership. XRP lawsuit, SEC under, underestimated Ripple. Um, this is from John Deaton, okay? He says, I don't think they saw that coming, and I think that they probably expected there would be a settlement, and I think they underestimated the fight inside of Brad Garlinghouse. 
I've learned there's a lot of sand inside that fella, and I admire that. He's doing a service for everyone in crypto. And Verrett might be right. In a July 22 interview, Brad Garlinghouse recognized the financial burden that the company had faced due, with, due to its legal battle with the SEC. At the time, Garlinghouse revealed that Ripple's legal expenses might exceed a hundred million by the time the lawsuit continues or concludes. He, however, expressed his commitment to carry on, noting that the expenses are worth it. And the Supreme Court could tame the SEC's overreach on crypto. We've been seeing the SEC, what it seems like, overreach the entire crypto industry right now. I think it's a perfect fit. If you, Ripple, are willing to go the distance to the Supreme Court, I think the Supreme Court will be willing to take a look at crypto and use the SEC's overseat, overreach in this area as a vehicle to transform the administrative law itself. During a separate interview on the on-chain podcast Friday, this lawyer, Verit, noted he expects a lawsuit to conclude in the district court relatively soon in a matter of months or weeks. According to him, Ripple could win or lose based on the fair notice defense, in which the case wouldn't have a lot of implications for the rest of crypto, and the SEC lets it lie. However, if the firm wins on the Howey test, the SEC is certainly going to appeal, and that could get kind of interesting. If you guys made it to the end of the video, comment the word appeal in the comment section below. When you watch the full video, it really supports the channel. So thank you. And let me know if you're a loyal supporter by commenting appeal below. This channel is nothing without you guys. So God bless you. And thank you so much for the support. And make sure you guys get your guaranteed $41 for free on Webull. And if you need an exchange for XRP or Flare, check out Uphold. It's sleek, it's simple, it's secure. Both are in the video description below. As always, guys, God bless you. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. Hope you had a great weekend. Until next time.